Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk, and yeah, another ranking video that is Batman related. Uh, I, I'm in my element, quite frankly. Um, I'm doing this in conjunction with Cody Leach. We are both releasing a ranking video together. This one is the actors, ranking all the actors that have played Batman in live action movies. Seven actors in total, ranging from the 1966 Batman, which starred Adam West, right up to the current Robert Pattinson in The Batman. So yeah, who's who's done it best? That is that is the question, isn't it? That's, that's everyone's raging arguments right now. I'm sure many people will disagree with my list, but remember, it is my list, not your list. You don't need to get offended. Uh, you know, me, me and Cody aren't going to get offended with each other because we have different lists. It's just an opinion. Uh, we've all got them. So, yeah, seven actors who have all portrayed Batman, ranked worst to best. Once you've checked out this video, if you haven't checked out Cody's, do go over, check it out. Um, but let's get down to it. Number seven for me is George Clooney from Batman and Robin. This is just a dire performance, to be honest. It's one of the best things that happened to George Clooney's career because it it, it gave him such a pasting critically, uh, commercially, and, and in every way. You know, he was known as the man who destroyed Batman, that it forced him to make better choices. But until this, I think he'd coasted quite a bit on, on having got success from ER. Um, he was now suddenly a leading man, and he was just like, yeah, I'll do big budget blockbusters. I'll be Batman. Of course, who's, who's, who's going to say no to being Batman? I don't, you know, I don't blame the guy. But man, if, if you'd have got to read the script beforehand, would you sign up? You know, if you were using your head, uh, probably not. Um, yeah. But it's just, it's a terrible performance. I know the script is terrible. Uh, not, not even the greatest actor in the world, maybe, could do much with this. But Batman has nothing. He's got no arc. Um, and I just don't think George Clooney brings anything to the table other than a wobbly head syndrome. Like, literally every time he's talking, or even if he's not talking, he's just sat there listening to someone else talk, and his head's all over the place. It's like he's got some nervous Tourette's-like twitch. It's just... It's a bizarre performance. It's 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 lax. It's lazy. It's, it's just... It's not good. And I say that as someone who really likes George Clooney and think that he's had a really great career since Batman and Robin. Number six is Val Kilmer. I, I kind of like Val Kilmer in the role of Bruce Wayne slash Batman. I just think that perhaps he doesn't quite know what film he's in. Uh, it's just, this is, we're, we're kind of leaving the Burton-esque fairy tale darkness of Batman Returns. And we're on our way towards the neon day glow mess of Batman and Robin. And this is kind of like the, the middle transition piece. Um, and I think like, yeah, I, I think that Joel Schumacher is going for the 66 kind of Batman with, with the way he shoots it, all the Dutch angles and the neon and whatnot. Um, and I just don't think Val Kilmer is there. Uh, I know the two of them had a few arguments on set. Maybe it was, it was about tone. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the two didn't get on. Um, but like I say, I don't think he's ter a terrible. I don't think he's even bad. I actually, I actually like him. I enjoy what he's doing with the character. I'm just not quite sure he realises that the film that he's making in his head is the film that actually got made. On the flip side of that, at number five, we've got Adam West, who knows exactly what film he's in. Uh, yeah, as star of the 60s Batman TV show, carried that over into a movie, the 66 movie, and... Again, it's not a great movie. I said this in, in my uh, my Batman, my live action Batman movies um, ranking. The movie is of no consequence because that's not what I'm ranking. What I'm ranking is the actor. And I think 
Adam West knows what Batman he's making. He can wink at the audience whilst taking it seriously enough for the kids. Uh, he knows exactly who, who he's playing to. He's got the charisma, uh, even if his waistline isn't particularly flattering in, in that suit. Uh, you know, he doesn't look like, he's not Ben Affleck. You know, he doesn't look the part that we would now expect for a Batman to look. But again, West is very charismatic. He knows that he's kind of making a, a comedy for adults, serious Batman for kids. Um, and, and that's really the, that's the difference. It's, it's what puts him higher than Clooney and Kilmer. The only reason he doesn't really get any higher than that is that there isn't much room for him to explore the true darkness of the Dark Knight. He's, he's very much more your caped crusader than he is your Dark Knight. So there's there's no real room there to get, you know, to, to dig real deep into character. It's just, it's a lot of surface level stuff. It's stuff you need charisma for in order to deliver. And West had that in spades. But beyond that, there's not much else there from a character standpoint. Number four for me is Robert Pattinson. Now, uh, hold on, people who are shouting at the screen. I love this movie. I absolutely love it. Gave it a five-star review. I think the Batman they've put on screen is... Mm, nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. But I've got to remind you, I'm not ranking the movies here, okay? I'm not ranking the movies. I'm ranking the portrayals. So I've got to ask when I'm ranking the portrayals, what does Pattinson bring to it? Well, he brings a lot, that is for sure. He definitely brings a lot. But the only reason, and I, th and I think he will go up as we get sequels. I honestly do. Um, I th the only reason he, he is at number four below the ones that are above him is that he only gets to show one side of Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Um, he's very dark. He's very brooding. And he is that way all the way through the movie. There, there, there are no, you know, there are no different sides to Bruce Wayne. There isn't the bordering Bruce Wayne, the public persona Bruce Wayne, the fall asleep in the in the meeting Bruce Wayne. You know, it, it's the, the the Bruce Wayne who takes a bunch of Russian girls out on a, on a trip j just to for a bit of fun, just just so that the press think he's an idiot billionaire. You know, so it, it's just no, I'm dark, I'm brooding, and I am that way from start to finish. Um, Again, that isn't a criticism of the film because the film they made needed that. It needs it and it works brilliantly, it works perfectly and Patterson does a brilliant job doing that. Um, it's just that it doesn't give him much more to play with uh, whereas the actors we've got coming up, they do get to play with more stuff and, and they do get to show more sides of the character. And number three for me is Michael Keaton. This is the this is the performance that made me a Batman fan, you know? You can ha have all your little talks about how faithful it is. As I mentioned in my, my, my movies uh, ranking, faithful to what? You know, when it comes to an interpretation of Batman, there have been many over the years. So the, the whole in faithfulness thing to me is a bit of a weird argument because he's a character that is very open to interpretation there have been many over the years this is just one um but i i i like what michael keaton brings to the role and we see multiple layers to his persona you know when he's in that batman costume he is dark he's brooding dare i say even psychotic you know uh that introduction where he pulls the criminal up, it's, I'm Batman. It's like that. It's just yeah, that's Batman. Um, but then he has these moments with Alexander Knox when he plays the Bruce Wayne, who's a bit floopy and a bit you know he's at a party that he's putting on for all the rich people and doesn't even know if he's is he am I Bruce Wayne? Hmm, I don't know. You know, it's it's like I like that playfulness that Keaton gets to use there. And then the romantic angle, uh, you know, we get to see the romantic angle with uh, 
with him and and and, and Vicky Vale and how it, it wrong wrong foots him or it, 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 t- it takes takes away his sure footedness. You know the the bit when he's he's trying to g himself up to telling her the truth and he's he's like, he suddenly turns into a little school kid. Um, it's just yeah he gets to play multiple facets of this character and he delivers them all perfectly. Number two for me is Ben Affleck. Uh, I again. I just this this is we, we get to see a lot of range um because we he's at he's at a very particular point in his career quite late in his career where he's gone through a lot of stuff we 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 know he's been through stuff because we see that robin costume with a ha 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 kind of sprayed on it it's just we we know he's been to the dark places he kills now um you know it's it's, it's just he's he's given up hope essentially and he has this journey of everything that he goes through with superman and realizing that he did wrong and then working his way back to the the guy who actually has faith you know as he says to alfred in Zack snyder's justice league have faith uh you know that that shows you the the journey he's gone on but again we get to see all the different sides to him not just he's not just batman all the time we get to see him as bruce wayne uh, you know, and 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 in different sides to his Bruce Wayne character, um, maybe not so much as my number one choice, which obviously you can tell by now is Christian Bale. Um, I, I just th- th- there are three sides to the Batman character that you've always got to show, uh, maybe even more to be honest. But you've you've got Batman, which is his true self. You know, you've got the serious Bruce Wayne, the one who is who's very business savvy the one who can kind of get on the phone to Rutger Hauer's character in Batman Begins and basically own him uh, because he's he's got the intellect and then you've got the again swimming in a pool well it's not even a pool is it swimming in a big plant kind of pot fish tank he's, he's swimming in a fish tank in Batman Begins with with a bunch of girls because he's he's been the goofish kind of hey i'm a billionaire drunk kind of i like that we get to see all those three sides i for me i want to see all three of those from a batman uh if, if you got a batman movie they're they're the three sides of the character i want to see in, in to, to varying degrees and we get that with christian bale's character um i also think that because because we see the whole journey with bale he gets you know like from this scrawny looking very youthful looking kid at the start with a little moppy hair before he you know has his meeting with Falcone and then he goes off trains himself up really beefs up it's just everything Bale's doing it it's 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 all all the performance wise you know it's not just the emotional stuff it's the physical stuff the physicality as well he looks one way at the beginning of 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 Batman Begins when he's not gone in his journey yet and then he's he proper bulks up he looks like a beast and it's just like yeah he's just from a performance standpoint he's 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 given it his all you know and to say as well that he he went into that after coming off the back of the machinist uh you you can't say Bale di- didn't yeah you can't say he doesn't deserve the number one spot from a performance standpoint what bale brings is incredible i know a lot of people mock the voice the batman voice but for me if you don't have a modulator like ben affleck's character uses it makes sense and batman is very animalistic the moment he puts that costume on and he goes out there and he's beating up criminals he's not the same dude he's he's an animal he's a beast he is someone you do not want to mess with. So that voice is an extension of that anger. And it's just like, yeah, I love it. Uh, so Bale, for me, number one. I think Pattinson has a very, very good chance of of going up there and matching him. It just all depends what he brings in the next couple of movies. Obviously, he, he's, he's had an arc. In, in the Batman, he's he's changed by the end of the Batman. We have to see how that change affects his character and his performance in the next movie. Um, but that that's what will determine uh, wh- where he sits alongside the ones that are above him currently. 
Again, remember, this is a video about performance, about who makes the best Batman. Um, for me, that's my reasonings. But it's all subjective, you know? So I'm sure Cody will have a very different list to mine. If you haven't seen his video yet, do go no, go head on over to Cody Leach, check out his ranking, and then let us both know down in the comment section below who you agree with, uh, if, if, if at all. Uh, but yeah, let me know your ranking of the actors to have played Batman down in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, Crack it.